Good morning. Unfortunately, I'm not able to join you in the on stage today uh, due to the fact that my flight out of Schiphol yesterday got cancelled. I got moved to another flight and then they cancelled that flight as well. So um, the only flight that they were able to give me was a flight that would bring me at six o'clock this evening. That wouldn't really help with this panel. So I am very sorry for this and I really is bummed out because the, this panel is a very interesting panel and we got a great team on stage today. So on this topic, um, I think there's some interesting observations that you can make about the, uh, the post-COVID world. So if you look in the COVID world initially when COVID struck, one of the things we spent a lot of time was on making sure that people could actually access with VPN and, and similar systems to the corporate systems. And uh, obviously we had to solve that problem and we usually solved it. Um, then we discovered after a while that the next problem was how do you onboard people remotely? And how do you make sure that if the people don't get into the office every day or at least a couple of days a week, how do you make sure that they still are the ones that they initially claim to be? So what we do see is that there is a lot of more focus on um, on remote identity checks and integrations into both the, the onboarding systems and as well into runtime systems. Another area that we have seen quite a lot of, of interest in is not only the onboarding of external personnel, be it contractors or business partners or even B2B customers and similar. It's also about the offboarding part. So how do you make sure that the people who no longer need access um, are actually offboarded? Well, conventionally you do recertification. But it's not that easy for the business. When they see a hundred names in a list, the easiest thing to do might very well be to click, 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 click everyone yes. Because if they ever say no, that's going to cause them problems. So what we do see in that space is that you need to help the business. So for example, if you include a interesting piece of information, for example, when was the last time that this user that you're approving actually logged into your system. That will probably cut down the, the amount of people who hasn't used their account in the last 90 days, gets another 90 days because the business has no clue about who they really are. So the overall um, trend I see in this space is that uh, we are trying to not only kind of solve the initial problem with remote access, but also solve the indirect problems of how do you make sure that the people that you do on board are actually people that they claim to be? And continuous checks as well as the offboarding parts. And the offboarding parts importance is of course for security reasons that you, you want to make sure that that people who no longer has access, needs access, has access to your system. But it's also getting more and more from a financial perspective as more and more systems is moving from fixed cost builds to per user and month billing. If you have a, a system that is used by 10,000 users, if you already sunk in all your costs, it's not that financially interesting unless you get an audit and it shows up that you have 15,000 users in a system you paid to 10,000 or you need to invest more money to build more capacity. But if you pay for every user every month, let's say 10 euros or 20 euros, being able to offboard 5,000 users, you know, that's 50K per month. That becomes real money in a year. In a couple of years, you can probably do a business case for quite a lot of things when you have that kind of savings. So again, sorry for not being there, but it's a very competent panel and I wish you a very nice conference. Thank you.